welcome uh, to this special webinar of IOMP. Uh, my time has just uh, ticked over, so uh, we are about to start. And I'm absolutely delighted uh, that you will be able to join us uh, to celebrate the International Medical Physics Certification Board and also to celebrate a bit uh, the contributions Raymond Wu has made uh, to that. I'm delighted that IOMP has decided to buy the deluxe version of Zoom uh, because we have already more than 300 participants uh, and our college would have probably uh, stopped at 200 uh, being a bit cheaper in its Zoom uh, capabilities. So welcome everyone, I'm absolutely delighted and I think this reflects a bit the interest in certification. Uh, I might start off uh, now by sharing my screen and uh, you should be able to see the invite uh, where you have registered and that the topic of uh, this uh, uh, webinar uh, is a growing professional recognition for medical physicists, Raymond Wu uh, and the IMPCB. Uh, and I would like to start off uh, by thanking IOMP uh, for allowing us uh, to have this webinar here uh, under the IOMP auspices. This is not a really a surprise because IOMP has been absolutely instrumental in setting up IMPCB. And IMPCB, the International Medical Physics Certification Board, uh, has been around now for about 12 uh, years. Uh, and that is probably a good time to celebrate. I might just show my next slide, uh, which shows you a bit what IMPCB is really all about. Uh, it's about answering a question, a question though not of us, a question of society, of societies, of administrators, and particularly of patients uh, who want to know if their, if their treatment, uh, if the technical aspects of their treatment are in good hands. And obviously no one can tell who is a good uh, and qualified medical physicist, uh, but uh, IMPCB is trying to help. The people who you, see, who you see here, they are obviously all excellent medical physicists. Uh, they belong to the Korean Medical Physics Certification Board and have been certified uh, in, in Korea. The Medical Physics Certification Board in Korea has been uh, accredited by IMPCB and IMPCB obviously tries to identify people and organizations who can provide good medical physics advice and good medical physics practice. So it is really not all about certification. So IMPCB is not just a certification and accreditation body. Medic uh, IMPCB has really a much bigger objective. The objective is to support the practice of medical physics. And one aspect of this practice of medical physics is really highlighting, promoting, and ensuring that the quality of the medical physicists who are dealing with your relatives, with our relatives, uh, with our students, with our society are uh, up to scratch. To do that, uh, IMPCB does two things. Uh, it accredits certification boards to basically make sure that certification boards for medical physicists have following appropriate standards. Uh, and in areas in jurisdictions where there is no certification available, uh, IMPCB actually offers certification. And the, the idea is really to promote medical physics and to highlight what good medical physics is and who good medical physicists are and what good medical physics practice is. Raymond Wu has been absolutely in instrumental in setting uh, up IMPCB. Uh, and since 12 years, he has been uh, our chief executive officer uh, and he will retire from that position at the end of, of this, this year. We really uh, like to have him around uh, till the last minute uh, of that, that time because his wisdom and his drive to make that happen to his enthusiasm and his generosity with time uh, and uh, everything 
uh, has really been absolutely fantastic and has been essential in making IMPCB the, the success uh, it is now. So this is the program for tonight. Uh, my name is Thomas Cron. Uh, I'm currently the, the chair of the Nominations and uh, Elections Committee of IMPCB. Uh, and we have uh, a number of presentations here uh, from uh, uh, starting off with something about the history, uh, uh, then the inner workings. Uh, and uh, I'm absolutely delighted that John Damiakis, uh, the president of IOMP, uh, was able to join us to talk a bit more about the bigger picture. Uh, and, and then uh, Ibrahim uh, Duhaini uh, is uh, both, he's one of these very special people who not just bring a huge amount of enthusiasm uh, to, the, to the field, uh, but also who have been, who are both on the board of uh, IMPCB, but also certified by the board of IMPCB. And, and I thought, uh, or we thought that uh, you might want to hear from him as well. And then we have a bit of time for questions, comments and answers. And I would like to encourage you to put these in the Q&A. Uh, I will try to moderate things as well as I, I possibly can. Uh, but uh, we would like to, uh, and now would like to hand over uh, to the two first speakers who are really at the heart uh, of uh, IMPCB. Colin Orton uh, was president uh, for more than 10 years uh, and he, no one is better in a better position than to talk about the history. We basically move straight away uh, into the presentation of Adel uh, Mustafa, uh, who is the chairman of the accreditation uh, uh, committee and as such the chief examiner. He is the person who really has the workings uh, uh, of IMPCB in hand. So with this a brief introduction. I'm delighted to hand over uh, to, to Colin and uh, uh, ask Colin to share his screen. Okay, let me get my uh, presentation going here. Well, uh, I'd like to get rid of this over here, but I don't think I can. I'm going to be blocking the edge of my slides here. Um, the thoughts about uh, an International Medical Physics Certification Board go way back to about 14 years ago. In 2008, the American College of Medical Physics were interested in discussing international board certification um, they were at the time sponsoring the American Board of Medical Physics, which was thinking about what else they could do to expand uh, their field. So American College of Medical Physics convened a symposium entitled Certification of Experienced Clinical Medical Physicists at their annual meeting in Seattle. And here's the program. You don't need to read all this. Um, if you go on to the IMPCB website, you'll actually get, not only be able to see this, but to be able to view the abstracts of all the meetings, all the discussions. Um, this was followed uh, immediately at that meeting by the formation of what was at that time called an International Board of Medical Physics Constituting Panel. Um, they formed this constituting panel on May 6, 2008. So that's when things started getting really serious about establishing an international certification board. And there were several members. Uh, Ned Sternick um, was the chair of this group. And you can see several people involved from all over the world, um, obviously including Raymond Wu. And this was followed a year later at the next ACMP annual meeting in Virginia Beach in May of 2009. And again, they um, organized a symposium creating an International Medical Physics Certification Board. And these were um, the speakers. And again, you can go to the website and look at the abstracts of all these talks. But basically they were talking about how could we set up a, a a, uh, an international certification board 
how it might work and so on. So that was in 2009. And then just after that, in September of 2009, was the World Congress in Medical Physics in Munich. And things started to get really serious then. Um, <coughs> the IOMP Professional Relations Committee proposed formation of a task group on Medical Physics Certification Board. And this was approved by the IOMP XCOM and Raymond Wu convened two meetings of the task group and the constituting panel. So the presentations at that meeting were many fold from people all over the world representing different countries, some countries with certification already, some countries without and some of the regional groups uh, were discussing what can be done to form an international board. So that was at the World Congress. The task group charges were established at that meeting, explore possibility and options in certifying medical physicists, particularly obviously in countries that don't have their own certification program. They, uh, <coughs> were set to carry out the work of creating an international credentialing board. Uh, they identified voting members, considered other, other related matters and made recommendations to the IOMP XCOM. So the International Medical Physics Certification Board itself was established at the next ACMP meeting. So ACMP were very much involved in establishing international board certification. They established the board on May 23rd in 2010 in San Antonio. There were 11 charter members initially at that uh, meeting and one observing member <clears throat> and the model certification program was adopted in 2011. And the bylaws were adopted in 2012. So we're now pretty much set up to establish the board. And the officers were then elected to take effect, take office in January of 2014. And the first board of directors were myself as president, Raymond Wu as CEO, who was just about to step down, um, Secretary General Timothy Chang, um, Registrar and Chair of Records Committee was Tay Suk Su of Korea. Um, Chief Examiner Thomas Cron, as you've just been hearing from him. Treasurer Alejandro Rodriguez Laguna and several at large board members to represent different parts of the world. So that was when the first board meeting board was established. Um, what happened then? Well, we had a problem. The IMPCB, although it was formed by a task group of the IOMP, was never established with any formal link to the IOMP, but as an independent organization, as it should be. In 2014, it was realized that the IMPC would have more international recognition if it was seen to be formally linked to the IOMP. In November of 2014, an IOMP IMPCP task group was formed to investigate how to increase the involvement of the IOMP in governance of the IMPCB. So IMPCB was still in being independent, but would have a more formal link to the IOMP. So what actions were taken? The task group proposed that the IMPCB bylaws, including it, specific implications that there would be three IOMP representatives on the board of directors. Originally there was just one, so now three. Each country that was a member would have one and IOMP would have three. And the IOMP was designated the principal supporting organization. So all the member countries were now to be called supporting organizations with the IOMP as the principal supporting organizations. These were then improved by the IMPCB in 2015. So what is the main role of the IOMP? Well, the main roles, in fact, are 
accreditation and certification, accreditation of national certification boards and certification of individual medical physicists. And this would be overseen by the IMPCB accreditation committee. I won't talk much about this because uh, Dr. Mustafa will be talking next. I'm sure he'll tell us a lot about the accreditation committee. Um, very briefly, the, the accreditation committee established three subcommittees, AC1, 2 and AC3, and their charges were developed parts one, parts two and parts three requirements of the board. Part one would be the general medical physics requirement, part two is the specialty requirement, and part three is the um, oral boards requirement. And, to prep, and they were required to repair operational details and Dr. Mustafa will be talking about that. So let's talk a little bit about what's happened with I, uh, IMPCB board certification. So far we've accredited the Korea Medical Physics Certification Board, the Hong Kong Institute of Physicists in Medicine Certification Board, the Hong Kong Association of Medical Physics Certification Board, and in process, are the College of Medical Physics of India and the Chinese Society of Medical Physics in Taipei. So we have three boards already accredited and two in the process of being accredited. What about individual certification exams? Well, certification exams have been held in Trieste at the ICPTP several times. And in fact, next week, there'll be another time. And I think that'll make four or five times we've had it at the ICTP. Um, in Dhaka, Prague, Mexico City, Riyadh, Amman, Vienna, Santiago, and Doha are at meetings in all of these cities. Um, recently, part three oral exams have been conducted online. And this started because of COVID. We couldn't do part three oral exams in person. So we decided to um, investigate the use of Zoom. And we've done it now on eight occasions. And in fact, we, we're going to continue doing that because it's such far more convenient to examine orally candidates by Zoom this, than it is to have them have to come um, to us to meet and for us to go to them to meet. Um, it's much easier to do it online. It's been very successful. Um, about, we're about to start online written exams for parts one and parts two. We haven't done it yet. We're doing it next week for the first time. So it's just about to start online. So how many candidates have we um, examined so far? Well, actually about 225 candidates have started into the exam process. So far, 47 candidates from 20 different countries have completed all parts and become certified. So we have 47 diplomates of the IMPCB. So let me summarize. Um, international accreditation and certification formally was conceived in 2008. Um, it was actually established as IMPCB in 2010. And the first board of directors were appointed in 2014. So about eight years ago, we really started work in earnest. We've accredited three national certification board and certified 47 um, clinical med medical physicists. Hopefully by the end of next week, we'll have certified, we'll, we'll be getting close to certifying more candidates by having them pass their part two exam and then be ready to take their oral exams. Um, if you want to read about the history of IMPCB and anything else about IMPCB, please visit the impcb.org, our website. There you can read the history. If you go to the bottom of the page, you'll see all these meetings that I've been talking about, and you can take a look at who presented what and look at their abstracts. Um, there you'll see the model certification program, and you'll see the bylaws of the IMPCB. So thank you all for attending, and I'd be glad to answer questions later on in the meeting. Thank, thank you very much, Colin. Uh, great, greatly appreciated, and it's always wonderful to see this long uh, history and also to see how many times uh, Raymond has uh, in, uh, been part of that. Uh, I would like to uh, now in, 
in, invite uh, Professor uh, Adel uh, Mustafa uh, to uh, give a presentation uh, on the inner workings uh, of uh, IMPCB. Good day, everyone, and uh, thanks, uh, Thomas. Thanks, uh, Colin, as well, for the introduction. I'd like really also to appreciate and thank the IMP uh, for giving us the opportunity to uh, recognize and honor our colleague and friend, Dr. Raymond Wu, a scholar and educator, as well as one of our uh, IMPCP leaders. Um, what we're going to be talking about is actually more details regarding the uh, workings of IMPCP, the nuts and bolts, as we can see it in here, and uh, just elaborate a little bit on the uh, uh, issues of accreditation as well as the exam um, process. So um, the accreditation committee, as was introduced by uh, Dr. Orton, uh, looks at the uh, accreditation requirements for countries which are interested in building their own certification program. Uh, we walk them through the application process, as well as we also go the details of the application structure in itself. The certification exams, uh, uh, we have three exams to offer. And, and those exams will be talking about the major categories uh, included. We'll be also talking about the admission requirements for each one of those exams, how the process goes, and once you become board certified, the timeline that's going to uh, take a, a candidate from the beginning until the end. So to start with here, the accreditation um, process, as uh, Dr. Orton mentioned, it works with national organizations that offer or planning to offer certification. It's basically for countries that they are interested in developing their own programs and therefore MPC in this case to be able to guide them in the process as well as to make sure that some standards are actually being met. We have a model program on IMPCP website uh, that's document V10A PDF in there. However, uh, the, those uh, guidelines are more of, if you like, uh, a, a roadmap uh, for initiating the process of accreditation. But uh, we take into consideration regional variations as well as uh, countries' uh, special conditions uh, due to their own local educational systems as well as legislative issues related to their uh, countries. Um, application should really come from a recognized organization with a, a professional structure as well as professional status. Individuals cannot really apply for applications. It has really to be some kind of an organization in place, maybe medical physics society, a university, a college, or, or a professional society in healthcare as well. The timeline on the review process and approval, uh, it may take actually a few iterations before approval. That's really kind of uh, uh, exchange of uh, letters and exchange of emails and files and uh, for us really to comment on the contents of uh, the application in itself. And uh, the verification process may actually also include a site visit. Most likely it will include a site visit by MPCP. And the purpose of that is really to check and see the um, uh, sites where the actual training is going to be made uh, to meet with the potential faculty as well as to meet with uh, uh, potential candidates if they are already um, hired or in the process of being recruited. Uh, accreditation can come in either full um, form or partial. Uh, maybe actually we call it sometimes also conditional certification. It basically means that if it is full, then it's going to, going to be for a certain period of time, most likely five years. But if it's conditional, it will mean in this case, there are certain conditions for the um, country or for the applicants uh, to meet before full accreditation is given. As I said, five years or less before re recertification. Uh, recertification will come after a um, certain period of time passes, which can be the five years or partial uh, uh, time of that. Uh, during the five years, we would really get a follow-up uh, evaluation and we are in the process of introducing an annual report that would expect accredited countries um, to submit to MPCP, uh, telling us about what's really going on during the year of um, uh, running their program. Um, the requirements for uh, accreditation stem from uh, what's actually been in the industry. IMP guidelines and policies on IMP education and training 
is one thing that uh, would likely lead to accredited bodies or bodies interested in being accredited to consult with and to uh, check. And also the new IA guidelines for the certification of clinically qualified medical physicists. Although those are graduate programs, there is a lot of work that can actually be uh, taken from uh, those two uh, guidelines. Uh, the focus of uh, accreditation is on uh, meeting educational requirements, just to make sure that whoever is applying or the group applying will have really to have a structured program in place that is satisfactory, that meets the um, uh, graduate programs uh, requirements uh, as established uh, in their countries. Also, a major component is to make sure that the professional training is, is uh, adequate, sufficient, and it covers or spans across uh, all uh, um, categories of a particular modality. It's also important for us to know the national professional structure of the uh, body that is going to be accredited and uh, also to make sure that we have sufficient qualified medical physicists that are going to be running that program. The process starts with a cover letter or a letter of intent uh, with some kind of uh, contact details. In that letter, we also like to see some kind of description of the organization as well as certification body as who's who in that organization and what they are also doing. And the list of specialists, or, uh, specialties rather, of uh, medical physics for which the certifications are offered. Will it be only diagnostic, therapy, nuclear medicine, combination of all? And then also the number of certified medical physicists in each specialty or category who are going to be in charge of doing the training. And of course, issues related to regulatory uh, status of the uh, organization that's applying for a certification, qualifications and experiences required for um, the applicants for certification as to what would be the basis for accepting somebody to be a candidate for the program and the details of your certification program. And that will include the duration of the program, uh, didactic schedule, uh, expected uh, competencies, and then also the categories within the modality, durations, evaluations, and so on. And some of you who are already doing these programs are familiar with uh, those uh, requirements. We need also a copy of the documents you give to candidates. What are you talking to them? What you are saying to them? when you attract them and hire them to get into your program and the uh, future uh, continuing pressure professional development that you're going to be applying. And then how are you going to communicate with the candidates, whether before they start the process of applying, during the process, the interviews, as well as, of course, while they are also with you. The uh, review uh, outcome is going to go uh, after um, the work is done with our three subcommittees, AC1, 2, and 3. Uh, the, those are uh, covering different areas in uh, medical physics. The final report uh, will have to be approved by AC. And then the review results will uh, either uh, offer a total accreditation, uh, basically meaning that your application is accredited as is, or may actually ask for some clarifications and follow-ups. We might actually recommend minor modifications prior to acceptance for accreditation. And we actually also recommend major modifications prior to acceptance or could possibly be rejection of the application altogether. The second component of our work is certification for um, individuals, uh, medical physicists interested in becoming board certified and in countries where certification is not really available. So it's for those who have no access to national or regional certification. The application should uh, be submitted by an individual in this case. And uh, we uh, have to establish eligibility uh, a few months before the actual exam. We offer three exams, uh, general medical physics, we call it also part one. Then we also offer two modality uh, uh, written exams, part two, diagnostic radiology, as well as radiation therapy. And soon we'll be doing also nuclear medicine. And then also we have the third part, which is the oral exam. And that is going to cover the actual specialty, uh, looking at clinical medical physics, professional judgment, as well as uh, communication skills of the applicants. Um, the three modalities I mentioned earlier are going to be radiation oncology physics, imaging, as well as nuclear medicine that we have just started. In the future, we might also offer radiation protection. Competences that are expected in part one, uh, in part two and part three, will include uh, understanding fundamental modality knowledge. 
as well as the ability to apply such knowledge to the clinical environment, mastering the quality and safety expectations from each modality. The oral exam will uh, also verify uh, that the uh, candidate is going to be able to operate independently. You must pass every category in the specialty exam to uh, be qualified uh, for uh, the certification. Those are categories in the therapy part from one, two, three to five in there. Uh, it basically covers uh, radiation protection, patient-related measurements, image acquisition and calibration, uh, quality control and quality assurance and equipment. And for the same thing we have for diagnostic imaging, we also have uh, five categories and uh, they can actually be seen also on our website in there. And in nuclear medicine as well, we have also five categories. They cover concepts, implication of safety, pattern hybrid uh, imaging, single photon imaging systems, including scintillation cameras, and uh, the rest of the list which we have in here. Um, conditions, or if you like, requirements for uh, uh, applying to uh, the written part one. Eligibility will include, uh, first of all, you'll have to have a bachelor's degree from accredited academic program in physics. Um, and uh, some programs offer medical physics, but it has to be really uh, uh, looked at carefully because uh, you still have to meet uh, uh, the physics requirements and uh, from an appropriate uh, physics program or engineering uh, uh, sciences program. Uh, then you have to have a master's degree or PhD uh, in, from an accredited academic program in physics, so medical physics, and appropriate physics or engineering sciences as well. Um, there is no need for professional training if you are just really applying for part one. There will be 100 questions in the test. There are going to be multiple choice questions and the duration of part one is going to be three hours. Um, you'll have to attend um, in person, and this is what we did it in the past, but recently we are, are moving into uh, the online exam. In fact, uh, in December this month, we're going to have our first online exams for part one. As to part two, uh, medical physics, these are the specialty exams. And the requirements, education-wise, you still have to meet part one requirements. But in addition to that, you need to have a minimum of two years full-time training preceding application uh, date. And then uh, training uh, has to be done under a certified medical physicist or someone with equivalent professional experience in the specialty that you are applying for. And again, there will be 100 questions in that exam. And CQ is going to be presented and the duration is also another three hours. We did those exams in the past in person and with a proctor, but now we're going to be switching again into the um, online exam. The oral exam, uh, once you pass part one and part two, you become eligible for going into the third part of the exam, which is the oral. And um, the duration between passing part one and two and the oral exam would be a minimum of about three months. It's actually more logistical time that we need to prepare uh, for uh, transitioning the candidate into the oral exam. There will be uh, five exam specialty categories. It doesn't matter what what uh, modality you're applying for. In each one of those, there are going to be five of them. You're going to be meeting um, in person five examiners and spending 25 minutes with each examiner, asking you in each um, modality. Total exam time is about two and a half hours. The exam results um, will appear within one month of the exam day and must pass all exam categories to be certified. Can be only conditioned in one category. And um, if one does not uh, pass or if one fails two categories, then it will be an exam failure. Uh, all those exams in the past were carried or done um, in person. But as uh, Dr. Orton mentioned, we have uh, been successful in conducting those exams online. Um, Re-examination is possible for those who fail part or all of the examination. A candidate can have three attempts for each part exam, and a candidate who fails part three needs to spend more time, clinical time. It's up to the examination panel to decide whether to give that candidate a nine month uh, period to prepare or 12 months. It depends on their performance at the exam time. And if any part of the examination has been taken unsuccessfully three times, 
then the candidate should be uh, required to reapply to do the whole exam from the beginning. And the candidate who fails to pass any part of the three part examination may petition to be re-examined in part one within one year from the uh, previous attempt. Continued professional development is something that we really like to have our diplomates uh, um, using in the future. Once you graduate and you get our certification, then we'd like to have some kind of continuity in maintaining a certification of your program, something that is in the making and we uh, certainly like to uh, hear feedback from all those concerned and interested in this. With that, I'd like to conclude and thank you for listening. Thank, thank you very much, Adol. Uh, it's a very comprehensive summary of what is, is happening uh, out, out, out there. Uh, in the interest of, of time, can I ask uh, everyone to hold questions uh, or type them into the Q&A uh, section? Uh, I'm trying to answer questions as we move along and I think the other panelists are doing the same. Uh, but in the interest of time, I would like to uh, uh, hand over uh, to Professor John Damiliakis, uh, who really within IOMP does not need any introduction. He's the president and we are really looking forward to uh, see what he is thinking about the bigger picture. Thank you, Thomas. I hope you can hear me and you can see my screen. I'm sharing my screen. So um, thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, obviously, for medical physicists, for all of us, certification is the basis of our professional recognition. Um, IOMP has developed its policy statement on the basic requirements for education and training of medical physicists, which was approved by the IOMP Council in the World Congress 2012 in Beijing. We use the term certified medical physicist, CMP, who is a physicist with a master's degree in medical physics or equivalent and clinical training in a subfield of medical physics. And this statement also uh, states that medical physics organizations or health competent authorities should establish their own national professional certification systems. As Colin and Adol have already mentioned, IMPCB supports the practice of medical physics through a certification program in accordance with uh, IOMP guidelines. I won't provide uh, information about IMPCB's objectives or uh, inner uh, workings. This was the subject of the previous talks, but during this presentation, I will rather try to uh, describe the certification mechanisms uh, existing in uh, several parts of the world. So in Europe, uh, we use the term medical physics expert. To reach the, the MPE status, the medical physics expert status, medical physicists need clinical training, structured, accredited, advanced experience, and CPD. Medical physicists in Europe are certified by national competent authorities, uh, there is a common, common framework, but the situation is far from being homogeneous. So I was saying that uh, there is a common framework in Europe, but the, uh, uh, the, the situation, the certification situation for medical physics in Europe is far from being homogeneous. And in, in United Kingdom, uh, certification is based on completion of an MSc program plus clinical training and the system is completed with successful past exam. Can you see now the EB slide? Yeah. Okay, okay, thanks. Okay. Uh, so IFON established the European Examination Board in 2017. Uh, I had the honor to chair the board during its first term uh, from 2017 to 2019. The EB awards the European Diploma of Medical Physics and um, the European Attestation Certificate to those medical physicists that have reached the medical physics expert level. Very long title. So the abbreviation is EAC MPE. Uh, EEB examinations are voluntary and its diplomas do not replace national 
uh, certificates. Now, if you are certified, you are eligible for the EDMB, for the European Diploma of Medical Physics. If you are not uh, a certified medical physicist, you have to have two full-time years of clinical training and active membership of the relevant National Medical Physics Society. Certified medical physicists with at least two full-time years of advanced structural experience and CPD are eligible to sit for the EACMP exams. And for non-certified medical physicists, the eligibility criteria are shown on the uh, right side uh, of, of this slide. And this slide shows the examination structure of the diploma and the attestation certificate, oral and written exams for the uh, EDMP and oral only for the EACMP. Uh, let's go now to you to the US to, to, to America from Europe to the USA. Uh, US colleagues use the term qualified medical physicist QMP. QMPs are qualified to a practice to practice only in the uh, subfields which in which they are certified. So the subfields of medical physicists, uh, are therapeutic medical physics, diagnostic medical physics, nuclear medical physics, medical health physics, and magnetic resonance imaging physics. The large, the large majority, the vast majority of medical physicists are certified by the American Board of Radiology, which also certifies uh, physicians in the disciplines of radiology, um, interventional radiology, and radiation oncology. Uh, the ABR offers initial certification of medical physics in the specialties of uh, therapeutic medical physics, nuclear medical physics, and therapeutic medical physics. Some medical physics physicists are certified by the American Board of Medical Physics, the ABMP, and uh, the ABMP limits its certificates to medical health physics and magnetic, magnetic resonance imaging. ABR, so uh, certification by the ABR requires that candidates pass computer-based qualifying, qualifying exams and an oral certification example. The qualifying, the qualifying exams are separated into two parts, part one and part two. The part one exams have a general part and the clinical part, the part two a uh, qualifying exam is offered to candidates who have achieved an appropriate level of clinical experience and is specific to each of the medical physics uh, specialties. Candidates are required to have completed a KMPEP accredited residency program. This is important. Um, uh, if you are interested in, in more uh, information, please visit the website, uh, theabr.org. Canada. The Canadian College of Physics and Medicine, CCPM, certifies, uh, certifies medical physics in Canada. The certification program requires a graduate medical physics education, minimum of two years of clinical experience, and the uh, initial cer certification process consists of written and oral exams. Uh, again, uh, there is a lot of information about uh, certification in Canada at uh, ccpm.ca. Australia and New Zealand, uh, the Australasian College of Ph Physical Scientists and Engineering in Medicine administers a training education assessment program, TEAP, that certifies professionals in radio radiation oncology, uh, medical physics, diagnostic imaging, medical physics, and radiopharmaceutical science. The program requires a master's degree in medical physics plus uh, three years clinical training in an accredited institution. The agency, the National Atomic Energy Agency, they have published two important relevant reports in 2013. The IAA published the Human Health Series Report number 25 on roles and responsibilities and education training requirements for clinically qualified medical physicists to provide guidance to member states in the development of educational programs. And recently in 2021, 
the IAA published a training course series, Report 71, on guidelines for the certification of clinically qualified medical physicists to provide international guidance in the certification of individuals and on the establishment of certification programs. Both publications were endorsed by IOMP and the latter, the 71 report, was also endorsed by IEMPCP. And this is a relevant article, has been published in Health and Technology uh, Journal recently. Uh, so this, uh, if you need more information, please don't hesitate, download from, from the Health and Technology Journal website. Before I close this presentation, I'd like to stress that I presented different, uh, different certification mechanism implemented in some countries, but certification remains a challenge in many, many parts of the world, in many countries. And there are many stakeholders, such as the IOMP, the IMPCP, um, the uh, uh, regional organizations of IOMP, our national member organizations, national authorities, and so on and so forth. Collaboration will allow all team members towards to, to uh, uh, work towards the achievement of the common goal. And in my opinion, this goal should be the establishment of a medical physics certification system in every uh, and each country. So having said that, I'd like to wholeheartedly thank Raymond for his uh, valuable services and work and uh, wish Wish him all the best. Thank you. Thank, thank you so so much, John. Uh, that that was a wonderful overview uh, of uh, certification all across the world. It is truly an international uh, business, and uh, it was truly an international uh, presentation uh, at, at, as well. Uh, I I think it is really wonderful to see these. Uh, that all these certification programs are broadly identical in terms of their uh, scope. Uh, there are a variety of differences and I, I think it is wonder good to see for others uh, that these different uh, programs can be used as, as models. Uh, and IMPCB, as one of the other things, uh, is very happy to help uh, uh, organizations locally to try to develop uh, a, a certification program. Right. I'd like to invite the last speaker, uh, Ibrahim Duhaini, uh, and uh, to, to give his presentation uh, on both sides. Yes, good days, everybody. Can you hear me well? Thomas? Yes, yes, Ibrahim. Yes, and my presentation is uh, showing my slides. First one. Yes. Hello. Okay. Good. Uh, good uh, time, everybody. It's my pleasure to uh, be part of this ceremony to uh, first congratulate Raymond Wu for his uh, tremendous effort in reaching IMPCB to this stage. Uh, IMPCB now is very well known worldwide, and uh, its seeds are being uh, spread all over the world. Uh, I have known Raymond since 2008, starting the, um, the establishment of the certification process. Uh, this is from the heart to the heart, Raymond. Uh, I don't have uh, um, uh, uh, a lot of to show on the uh, uh, screens, but I have a very wonderful memories that we uh, uh, shared together uh, during the meetings of IMCB uh, establishment. Uh, first, this is in 2009 in uh, Virginia Beach, and you can see Raymond Wu is saying, Peekaboo, a new baby is coming soon called IMVCB. And in, in this meeting, we had uh, a very uh, fruitful, you know, uh, uh, discussions about the projects. And you can see in this picture, uh, Colin and uh, Raymond Wu, uh, Heemin. You and uh, Sterling, that's Sterling, and this is uh, Adil Muhammad from uh, Bahrain, and different uh, people that were very enthusiastic to uh, establish the board. 
again, uh, this is another meeting in, in the same meeting, and Lebanese sweets were the main menu in the IPCB. I always bring some sweets to the table, introduce our uh, sweet menu to the rest of the uh, team members. Again, this is in uh, AM, uh, IOCMP in India. Uh, there was a, a growing meeting at that time and uh, uh, sweets on the table. Uh, this is the uh, Virginia Beach again. It's one of the first meetings uh, that established the uh, process, uh, and it was like a table presentation. Raymond Wu put the uh, his uh, uh, presentation on a uh, PC on the table and introduced us about the process. Uh, here in Munich, Germany, uh, Raymond Wu having tomato juice, as you can see, so that to keep uh, awake and look after Colin. Do you remember this, Colin? I certainly do. <laughs> uh, this is uh, one of the last meetings, uh, and actually the exam uh, was performed in King Saudi Arabia in February 2020, and I think this was the last uh, uh, meeting that we had in person, uh, uh, you know, before COVID-19. And uh, to speak about the, uh, the the two sides, you know, uh, if if somebody owns a, a Mercedes, he cannot drive a BMW. In that sense, you know, I decided to go through the process of the IMPCB board exam. And I was one of the first candidates to uh, apply for that. Uh, being in the board, but my experience with that is that uh, and um, my colleagues now in the board, they examined me during the, uh, uh, you know, the uh, oral exam. And my experience is that, oh, I, I thought that everybody knows me, then it will be, uh, then they will pass me. But uh, to be honest with you, and this is to be uh, the, uh, the essence of being very, very uh, professional in the way to, to conduct the exam. You know, the colleagues uh, that conduct uh, the oral exam, they put aside everything about, you know, uh, the, the, uh, that if you, if you know the person or not, because of course, a lot of candidates will be, uh, you know, they know the candidates, the examiners. But the, 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 the minute I enter to the exam room, you know, uh, Raymond Wu doesn't know me, you know, uh, and I have been with him, you know, like more than 10 years. He examined me, he asked me the questions as if I am a, a, a unknown guy to him. And uh, the way he, uh, you know, uh, e express the, the, uh, the, the questions and, uh, and try to, um, you know, make it clear that giving an exam it has to be a very a professional way so that people can, uh, you know, benefit from the uh, uh, all the, uh, you know, the knowledge that they have. And what, you know, uh, sometimes that happens that if you know the examiner, it would be like more difficult because you start thinking of, oh, I know this guy, you know, so uh, he, uh, you know, the, 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 the uh, I cannot explain how the uh, I felt because the uh, you know being in exam room is a very uh, stressful situation and it will add more if you know the person the examiner in any way uh, so uh, to be part of this board exam is a good experience and I encouraged all you know uh, applicants or all medical physics around the world to go through the exam. And myself, I uh, have now sent more than, you know, uh, 10 of my students to perform the exams. Uh, three of them have already passed and they are now uh, diplomats. And uh, my last slide is that behind a great man, there is a woman and uh, she is always with him, with his uh, uh, trips and with his uh, efforts to uh, uh, establish the IMVCB. So I would like to also to thank Dulcy for her effort to uh, be behind Raymond for all his efforts. Uh, and we are all from IOMCB. We say thank you, Raymond. You did a great job and we will always be, uh, you know, uh, look uh, up to you for any 
of the new projects. Thank you very much, Raymond. Thank, thank you very much, Ibrahim. I, I think that was beautifully said, and uh, I think that that came from the heart of, of all, all of us, I, I, I think. Uh, we are not having a huge amount of time, and I'm actually trying to answer questions uh, on the, uh, uh, the Q&A. Unfortunately, my computer sometimes doesn't allow that. Nevertheless, there are a number of wonderful questions, very uh, good questions. But before I get to the to questions and uh, ask maybe the panel one or two of them, I just would like to, to ask Raymond, uh, uh, would you uh, at, at least uh, say one or two, two words? Uh, otherwise, I, I just uh, would uh, ask everyone in their home to uh, put their hands together for, for Raymond uh, uh, because uh, I think he has been so wonderful over the years uh, and IMPCB uh, is uh, really a, a tremendous success. Yeah, I, I just want to mention that uh, it is not me uh, to be celebrated. It is the whole, uh, all the co-work, all the workers together, that uh, volunteers that, that put in so much time. I appreciate the opportunity to serve together and uh, particularly, of course, uh, there are many uh, strong supporters like Colin and uh, Thomas, yourself and John and uh, Adult uh, and continue on and Ibrahim keep uh, giving me a uh, warm kindness uh, and Slavic and uh, he was the uh, president of IOMP and uh, KY Chung as well as uh, as Tay Sok Su and Nesternik and so many people were actually making it possible. And then, the, uh, and then we have a new uh, CEO elect, uh, Horatio, uh, who is uh, from Canada and uh, he's also in the participation. Thank you all to making all this happen. And uh, I would continue to uh, to help uh, when I when I first need it. Uh, if we have. Uh, any need uh, for me, I, I'm more than happy to, to jump in. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Raymond. Uh, there, there are so many uh, good, good questions uh, on, on the uh, Q&A board. Uh, the uh, presentations have all been recorded and should be available uh, uh, through IOMP. Uh, I, I think Magdalena has instructed me that we need to, to finish after an hour. Uh, I'm not sure if that, that is the case. I have to draw the uh, discussion to a close. Uh, I would like to acknowledge uh, all the, the speakers, but I would also like to acknowledge all the, the participants. And, and I uh, would like to acknowledge many of the, the questions uh, uh, which were out there, which uh, really covered a huge uh, amount of ground uh, from biomedical engineering in the question, uh, how can that work in, in biomedical engineering? At the moment, not, uh, but I, I think similar structures obviously work in engineering uh, and chartered engineers uh, are a, a, a group of people where that, that uh, uh, this sort of certification process is also in, in, in place. There were a lot of questions about collaborations uh, with other organizations, in particular, obviously, uh, with, with AAPM and ABR. Uh, I, I think this is a collaboration process at this point in time, uh, and uh, mutual recognition uh, is something which is always going on uh, in the discussion in the background. This is more difficult than, than it actually uh, sounds initially. And a lot has also to do with uh, radiation protection, uh, which is something which has different uh, uh, local and, and regional uh, requirements and regulations, uh, which make uh, one size that's sort of fit all, but not exactly. Thank you all very much. Uh, and uh, thanks to uh, IOMP uh, for uh, hosting this, this session. Uh, it, it certainly has been wonderful uh, for me. I actually learned quite a bit. And I would like to, to thank everyone here uh, again 
for your interest and uh, support of IMPCB. Thanks. Thank you, Thomas. Bye. Nice to see you, everybody. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank you all.